Stop it. Stop right there and hear me out. Nintendo's amazing for being the biggest pioneer in the video game industry, and for better or worse, they're still changing the way we play games to this day. But one thing I don't think Nintendo needs to try and pioneer is online gaming, because as we all know, they've been asked backwards in that department for over a decade now. So for the love of Terry, Nintendo, just copy Xbox Live and or the PSN. My name's Cameron, and let me tell you just why they need to do that. <laughs> If you've been following this channel for a while, then you'd know damn well that I love the above average sized N. Maybe even a little too much. But there's no way anybody could really defend how Nintendo's been handling online gaming up until 2018. I mean, the Xbox 360 did a better job in 2005, but Nintendo's been way too stubborn and overprotective of small children to even give us the bare-ass basic online experience. And I'm still skeptical they learned from their past mistakes for a few reasons, with the first one being the fact that the Switch's paid online service has been delayed till September 2018, because it only confirms that Endog hadn't fully thought this whole online business all the way through before releasing the Switch. Although, I am glad Nintendo's delaying it rather than releasing crap, which is how they've been known to treat games. And in most cases, Nintendo games that were originally delayed ended up being good, so there is hope they'll get online done right this time, since they do seem to be taking it seriously. Plus, while their online services have always sucked in the past, at least it's always been free, whereas now they think it'll be good enough to charge money for. But, we can't let the above-average-sized end off the hook that easily, because having an net but free online service isn't the same thing as getting free samples of horse steak at Applebee's and not liking it. I mean, it's 2018, after all, having a competent online service is to be expected, whereas a free slice of horse steak at Applebee's is just a bonus. And it's absolutely my mind-blowing how oblivious Nintendo's been to how beneficial the internet could be for gaming. The only upside to that is that they're also oblivious as to how shitty it can be since they don't release incomplete games that require massive day one downloads. And I'm glad they punish companies who try doing that on the Switch by putting this warning label on the box art. But the internet still has plenty of benefits for games that Microsoft and Sony are capitalizing on, and Nintendo could have been a long time ago as well if they'd just admit that somebody else came up with a good online model and copy it. I mean, imagine if Sony was too stubborn to give us analog controls just for the sake of not copying Nintendo. That'd be ridiculous, and it's pretty much the same thing Nintendo is doing now. They treat online gaming like it's a complete novelty, but the fact that the Switch's online service is taking so long to come out could be a good thing since it means there's a lot of effort being put into it. However, that also means that there's just as good a chance that Nintendo's gonna overthink it once again and try to be innovative when it's not necessary. I know it's possible they could come up with something amazing that nobody's ever thought of, and if you're watching this video from the future and that ended up being the case, then feel free to ride my ass in the comments below. But in May of 2018, we have every reason to be skeptical that Nintendo might not know what people want. After all, they originally thought the Wii U gamepad was gonna convince core gamers to come back to Nintendo. And that same kind of overthinking is why I'm worried that the Switch's internet service is going to have some kind of inconvenient features that'll be touted as innovation. And speaking of the Wii U, an anonymous developer said that the entire development team for the Wii U claimed to have never even looked at Xbox Live or the PSN. I know that's just a rumor, but if you look at the Wii U's online capabilities, then that's the only thing that seems to make sense. And if true, that's absolutely insane. People give Sony a lot of shit for copying Nintendo and Microsoft. Even I do due to the fact that they're so blatant about it. However, that doesn't necessarily mean that copying's always wrong. It's like back in 96, Sony said, Oh, you guys have an analog stick. That's way better, actually. We'll do that, too. And more recently, they said, Oh, Xbox has a good online service and achievements. Well, people like it, so fuck it. Let's give it to them. And hell, let's go one step further and make our network easily accessible to hackers. Sometimes copying people's ideas just makes sense if it's obviously superior. It happens all the time in any industry, but in the video game industry, Nintendo's innovated damn near everything we use today, which would explain their inability to accept the idea of implementing something into their product that they didn't invent first. Even with something as simple as disc-based games, it just had to be stubborn assholes about it on the GameCube, which ended up losing them a lot of third-party support due to the low storage capacity. To be honest, though, I personally thought the GameCube discs were pretty cool. And I know there's the argument that they only popularized innovations from obscure failed devices that were technically considered video games. Games. But even if we're going with the narrative that Nintendo's evil and did just that, they were at least able to get away with it for all those examples, whereas they can't get away with ripping off Xbox Live as their own thing since everybody knows what it is. But for this one time, I wish they'd just copy the competition. And obviously when I say copy, I don't mean to the extent Sony does to where it's blatantly obvious. Nintendo just needs to go in that general direction. We don't need any more weird policies just to play games with other people. And being able to communicate would be pretty ideal as well. And look, I understand that Nintendo's mission is to protect tiny infants who could barely support the weight of their own heads. And they certainly wouldn't want evil adults saying immature things to children online, which is what I'm pretty sure they're worried about. This fear probably comes from that incident where two guys tried to diddle kids over Swap Note. And there were also all those times where my neighbor and registered sex offender Terry lured me into his home with PictoChat. But the Switch has stronger parental controls than any console's probably ever had before. So you'd think we're past the point of not being able to talk to people in games online for any console. But nope, we have to use Discord for competent voice chat. 
And on top of that, we can't even do something as simple as choosing what team we want to be on for Splatoon. And while we're on the subject of Splatoon and voice chat, let's talk about the Splatoon headset, which is another reason why I'm skeptical that Nintendo really has good things planned for the online service. This thing connects to the Switch and uses your phone as a middleman that requires a Nintendo app to be downloaded and opened at all times on your phone for the voice chat to even work. You can't even be on your lock screen. I mean, just look at how overcomplicated Nintendo made this shit. It's hard for me to be optimistic with Nintendo's solution to the Switch not having voice chat being a Cinco product from Tim and Aaron. Is this meant to keep people from talking to kids? Because there's plenty of better ways to do that, you dingoes. Besides, in 2018, kids are way more likely to encounter predators in inappropriate language on their phones than they are on something like playing a console game online. In fact, most adults are going to try to avoid playing with kids. They're usually the ones dropping racial obscenities in games that are intended for adults like Call of Duty. And kids like that wouldn't want to play games that are intended for kids. I know actual children play Nintendo games as well as adults, but I doubt very many adults are going to be using foul language in Mario Kart Online. Well, okay, there's going to be a lot of profanity. And hey, there may even be the occasional diddler or two as well. But again, not as much as things like Twitter or MySpace. And don't forget the Switch has the app that the parents can use to limit their kids' online experiences. Even though most kids just run wild on the PSN and Xbox Live anyway. So fuck the kids. F the kids? Kids. From Kokor. All people want from Nintendo is the option to have a competent online gaming experience that's comparable to the competition with voice chats, lobbies, customization, and being able to have the choice on whether or not you're playing with or against your friends. I know the online service is going to be $20 a year, and this will be the first full last attempt at playing catch-up, so I'm not expecting things to be fully polished right off the bat. However, I will say that online multiplayer isn't the end-all be-all, and in my opinion, it's kind of overrated. It's great when games are built around it, but not every game needs multiplayer. While games like Breath of the Wild and Mario Odyssey probably have the potential for a badass online mode. Much like many other great single-player games out there, they definitely don't need it. And I'm glad Nintendo's never fallen into the trend attacking it onto their single-player games. But that brings me to my personal most important area where Nintendo's online service needs improvement, and that's with their distribution of digital games, especially with a virtual console or whatever they're gonna end up calling it. This is another instance where I think Nintendo should just copy the competition with things like giving discounts to yearly subscribers or the occasional free game. Either that, or copy PlayStation Now's Netflix type of streaming service with your classic library, because that alone would sell Switches off the ass. There are emulators out there, but with small additions to classic games like leaderboards for high scores, completion times, video replays, and other shit like online multiplayer would really go above and beyond to make the experience much better than an emulator. But if we're not going to be able to stream classic games, then please, Nintendo, at least stop being stingy as hell with your digital games. And I'm not complaining about the prices, but take notes from Microsoft. Because if I download a game to the Switch, then I want to own it forever. I spent hundreds of dollars on the Wii's virtual console, thinking I was just going to be able to transfer all the games up to whatever the successor was going to be. Just like you can do with the Xbox 360 to the Xbox One in most cases. But later I found out I have to pay even more money to transfer my games up to the Wii U, despite there not being any added features outside of being able to play on the gamepad within 20 feet of my console. And it's the same problem on the 3DS, which is why I started collecting physical copies of retro games in the first place. I'd happily repurchase every game I've ever owned digitally one more time just to be able to take them with me on the go. But I don't want to do it every four to six years. I want to be able to play these games when I'm too old to get a bonnier. Imagine being in a retirement home having to play 64 games on the Wii. I want to at least be able to play them on my new Switch 2 USXL. So if the large end's not copying Sony's streaming service, then at least let us keep our damn games like Microsoft does. And don't be paranoid that somebody might use the same Nintendo account to play the same game on two separate consoles. Because I assure you, you guys are going to be just fine. And again, I'm not saying Nintendo should just outright copy and paste everything Microsoft and Sony are doing. Their innovation's what makes them great. All I'm saying is that Nintendo shouldn't be afraid to learn a thing or two from their competition. What do you think, though? Should Nintendo try some crazy innovative idea for their online service for the potential of surpassing Xbox Live in the PS? In? Or should Nintendo cash their chips in before they crap out from trying too hard and just copy Sony and Microsoft? Let me know what you think in the comments below, and as always, I'll pin whatever I find most entertaining. Consider supporting this channel on Patreon for as low as three quarters, two dimes, and a nickel a month. Like and share this video to help this channel grow. And if you're either Tom Cruise, a clone of Tom Cruise, or as sexy as Tom Cruise, then go ahead and press the subscribe button. And if not, press it anyway. My name's Cameron, and I'll see you next time. So I want to say thank you to your loyalty. Thank you for your support.